Hey everyone. Uh, first off, shout out to Mitchell Clyborne yet again who had this custom made uh, German wooden sword made for me with Nintendo Prime on it. Kind of cool. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that I don't enjoy talking about, but it needs a t more attention brought to it, I think. Because I don't know that anybody outside of the given community knows what's going on. But Nintendo is manually censoring certain types of video on YouTube. And we're talking about videos that are in the homebrew and I don't know if I want to call it the hacking scene, but more so like the homebrew and emulation scene. Uh, I'm talking about Modern Vintage Gamer in particular. And before I say anything on this topic, because I have I've spoken about homebrew and emulation in the past on Switch, I will let Modern Vintage Gamer explain the situation that's happening. So for those people that don't know, on Tuesday, I received a copyright claim for a Switch video that I did back in October of 2018 called the Nintendo Switch Homebrew Goes Next Level. And this was claimed by Nintendo for Super Mario 64. Now, Super Mario 64 features in my video for about maybe four to five seconds tops. This is something that was a manual claim by someone at Nintendo. So obviously Nintendo aren't happy with the fact that I'm releasing homebrew videos on the Nintendo Switch on YouTube. As it turns out this morning, which is Friday morning, on the 11th of April, Nintendo decided to claim three more videos, which is a total of four videos. And for the same reasons, they're all Switch homebrew related videos. And the claim reasons are for things like Mario Kart Splatoon 2, which by the way, I don't have any Splatoon 2 footage in any of my videos and Zelda Link to the Past. Now, in all instances, it's because I'm running some type of screenshot or emulator of a gameplay running on a emulator on the Nintendo Switch via homebrew methods. Now obviously Nintendo isn't happy that I'm releasing these types of videos and have decided to issue copyright claims against four of my videos. But now that they've copyright claimed four of my videos, that means things are a little different. I'm being targeted by someone at Nintendo that obviously doesn't like the videos that I'm releasing for the Nintendo Switch Homebrew and wants to censor me and censor other people from the fact that Homebrew does exist on the Nintendo Switch and they are going after YouTubers that are releasing Homebrew Switch videos and just issuing copyright claims for the most ridiculous reasons possible. Now, before anyone tells me that, you know, emulation is illegal and ROMs are illegal and you got struck down because you were playing Super Mario 64 on the Switch and you were running an illegal version of the ROM, well, let me tell you, I own an original copy of Mario 64. I also own an original copy of Splatoon and I own original copies of all the games that I was demonstrating on the Nintendo Switch when I was running Nintendo 64 and Super Nintendo emulation. I've got originals of everything. So that particular argument is null and void. Now, first up, I don't want to touch too much on the legality of emulation and all of that. From my understanding, from how it was explained to me by a lawyer, Essentially, how the law reads is that you can emulate games, uh, you can use ROMs, but you need to self-create those ROMs. They can't be downloaded off the internet. So it doesn't matter if you actually own a copy of the game. What matters is that you self-created the ROM that you're using while you know off that copy that you own. So whatever. Um, <laughs> Modern Vintage Gamer does not conveniently say that he created his own ROM. He just says that he owns the game. So that is a, a point of contention, I suppose. But also, the thing is, how would Nintendo know if he self-created that ROM or not, right? How, how would he have any idea? They don't. So that means that they are specifically targeting his channel because it talks about homebrew, which, by the way, for all you guys out there that, that like my stance against hacking, where I, I kind of suggest people just don't bother doing it to their system because Nintendo frowns upon it as much as they do, it's not actually against the law. You can hack your system and homebrew it all you want. You know, it, it, it's fine. Um, so I don't agree that Nintendo should censor people talking about homebrew on Switch. I also don't think they should censor people talking about emulation. Um, the thing is that while I do not support doing such things because most people do it through illegal methods, I don't, I'm like, I'm not against emulating like games on the whole. I'm not against homebrew. And while I understand that Nintendo is going to be against both of those, 
I don't think that the copyright claims they're doing are actually legal. But the problem is for someone like Modern Vintage Gaming is that in order to properly dispute these claims, he basically has to make a counter lawsuit against them. Because if you use the dispute process on, well, you know, the, the way that YouTube has it set up, well, here's what how Modern Vintage Gamer explains it. What is happening here, guys, is that Nintendo is censoring people from releasing homebrew videos on the Nintendo Switch, and it's not right. Now, my response to this is that this all falls under fair use. This is a plain and simple fair use issue. That means that I am within my right to file disputes and hopefully get my videos reinstated. Now I say hopefully because I don't really know if that's going to happen. Unfortunately, when there is a copyright claim that is sent against you, YouTube does not get involved in the adjudication process whatsoever. So if you decide that you want to file a dispute against that claim, it goes back to the claimants themselves to basically adjudicate and make a decision. Now, of course, Nintendo is most likely going to turn around and say, F you, you're not getting these videos reinstated and that's going to be the end of it. So yeah, um, basically if you use YouTube system, it's up to Nintendo to decide, oh yeah, we made a mistake. These were manual claims. These were not automatically grabbed. So they're not going to suddenly say, oh yeah, it was an automatic, you know, grabbing mistake. No, it's a manual claim. So the next step after that is to take legal recourse and basically counter sue against Nintendo um, that claiming that this is an infringement upon fair use and obviously have the court system take care of it from there. The problem is that obviously gets lawyers involved, that obviously comes with lawyer fees, and all this stuff you usually have to pay up front. There aren't many lawyers that'll be like, oh yeah, we'll take your case uh, because we think you're going to win, and then we'll just take, you know, our, our, our cut off the top of the winnings. That's not always how it works. So yeah, you usually have to front the cost first, and then if you win, sometimes the other side will pay for your lawyer fees and all that, but that has nothing to do with starting the lawsuit. You have to have money in the first place, and I'm not going to sit here and get into his financials because I don't know them, but I know that it's a very expensive, very lengthy process that can last years and years in the court system, and for someone like Modern Vintage Gaming, who's just a your average YouTuber like me, obviously a more popular one, uh, it doesn't it doesn't feel worth it to him and unfortunately the problem with it not being worth it for him is he's no longer going to be covering homebrew on this channel when it comes to Nintendo Switch and I think that's a shame and that means that Nintendo has won because Nintendo is being allowed to flex their muscles in a way that are that's probably not legal and get away with it on YouTube because this particular person isn't willing to do anything about it. And I'm not going to get mad at him for being unwilling. I, like, if they did it to me, I think the easiest thing is for me to stop making whatever kind of content that is offending Nintendo. Because you just don't want to be on a company's bad side like that. Even if you won a lawsuit, what's the chance that he'll ever be on friendly terms with Nintendo again? You know, say he goes to E3 and uh, he's trying to get like a, you know, a media pass and, and, and get like a booth tour. Like Nintendo's not going to let him do that if he's on their bad side. So like, I, I understand that he obviously also has that reputation with Nintendo that he doesn't want to completely sour, even if it means he can't cover that kind of content anymore. That doesn't mean he won't make any Switch videos at all, but he's definitely not making any homebrew stuff. So I think that it's a shame that uh, we as YouTubers need to worry about stuff like this. And I get that we've had worries in the past. Nintendo used to be much worse, much, much worse. We couldn't use any game footage or any trailers without risk of copyright claims. And uh, Nintendo changed their stance on that. And you would figure, oh, well, he's just showing footage of games. You know, how does that go against Nintendo's stance? <laughs> it doesn't, technically. Uh, but Nintendo doesn't like homebrew. They don't like emulation. They don't like people talking about how you can homebrew and emulate games on their platform even though in some cases it's not actually against the law. So I, I think that this is a problem that needs the attention of the grander Nintendo community because regardless of where you stand, if you're like, yeah, screw hackers, yeah, screw the homebrew community, yeah, screw all the pirates out there, this also hurts people that legitimately just want to play games they already own on the current system 
uh, rather than having to have a zillion systems hooked up at once. I don't think there's anything wrong if someone wants to take their entire retro library of games and you know basically turn them into ROMs and then use those ROMs through an emulator on their PC or on Switch. I don't think there's anything wrong with that inherently. And uh, while I don't encourage people to do those practices because of the way Nintendo frowns against it, it's also not illegal. So I have no issue if you're doing that. And I don't think that we should allow Nintendo to just sit back and willy-nilly be able to censor people that are doing that and might be doing it legally. I think that this is one of those cases, just like with Nintendo over the years when they were trying to um, exercise, you know, try to tell us what fair use is um, about using their game footage and all that, um, where we got sick and tired of it and we constantly complained and we constantly backlashed and then Nintendo changed their policy. I think this is also one of those things that if enough of us YouTubers draw attention to it, if enough of us keep spouting how this just shouldn't be allowed, that Nintendo will eventually back off these kind of stances. I don't know if they're going to remove the copyright claims off of his videos, but, you know, and by the way, they didn't just like claim his videos, they block them worldwide. Like that's, that's like beyond just like, oh yeah, we're going to take the revenue from your videos. No, this is, oh no, we're going to make sure these videos aren't seen by anyone. Uh, that's, that's the kind of censorship we're talking about here that Nintendo's exercising manually. And I think if enough of us talk about it, enough of us make a hubbub, it will eventually change. It's not going to change now. It might not change by the end of the year. But the more we bring it up, the more Nintendo is going to be kind of forced to back off of this stance because the last thing Nintendo wants to do is alienate huge chunks of their consumer base that actually purchase their games. And there are large chunks of people, including Modern Vintage Gamer, that while they might emulate games, they also buy all the games they emulate. And Nintendo's not going to want to lose those sales, are they? No, no, they're not. So, again, if enough people speak up, I feel like changes can happen at Nintendo. No, a petition isn't going to do anything. Reggie fils told us petitions don't help. But what does help is consistent public pressure on this specific issue. And I think it's important because Switch is killing it. We have an awesome library of games coming this year. And Nintendo's got every right to be praised for a zillion things coming up in 2019. But this is one thing that we need to look at Nintendo and be like, look, you can't be censoring people like this. They are not breaking the law. You are misusing and abusing the system YouTube has in place to push an agenda that doesn't actually qualify as a copyright claim so yeah i think we just need to keep the pressure on you know not talk about it all the time i don't want to make this like the dominating conversation at nintendo prime in 2019 but i do think it's something we need to talk about more and more again i also want to apologize if you're hearing video games and stuff in the background my boys are uh, playing some games this morning and uh they're not listening when i tell them to keep the volume off Anyways, I love you guys. Um, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check out uh, Modern Vintage Gaming's video on this for more information. And uh, also be sure to check out our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. And guys, remember, I am Nathaniel Rampelgents from Nintendo Prime. Stay classy, everyone, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.